Second Chronicles, chapter 25, verse 14. A great place to start. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomite, what we just read, that he brought the gods of the children of Seir, that's Edom, and set them up to be his gods, and bowed down himself before them, and burned incense unto them. These gods are loser gods. These gods are the Edomites that lost. While God the Father, God Jehovah, has stood with Amaziah to give him victory, they're going stripping the slain, they're taking their money, they're taking their weapons, they're taking their clothes and their animals, and they're finding these dead gods all over the place. Amaziah, Amaziah picks them up and says, you're my God. You, God that lost this battle, up against the God that has given us victory, wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah. And one of the church periods that you read in Revelation chapter verses 1 to 4 is a church, and I forget the name, but it meant much marriage. And what happened is, the church that God has washed, the church that God has blessed through the blood and through the gospel, has entertained the idea of taking the devil and loser gods into the church. I'll tell you and give you an example what this is. You will find in Christian churches where people are saved, you will find Christmas trees. You will find Estar eggs. You will find Halloween or trunk or treat. You will find bingo, you will find bazaars, you will find cake sales, you will find everything that is found out in the world and in religion. Carnival. Carnival. This is, you keep going. I kind of wonder where VBS came from. What's wrong with VBS? Even the Catholics are doing it. And... We have been in the family, we have been in church, and we're going to open our Bibles at Jeremiah chapter 9, and now we're going to do cha Jeremiah chapter 11 with a Christmas tree on the piano. You forgot a chapter in the Bible, sir. And we have entertained the idea of the world, and this is what Amaziah has done, and it angers God, though it feels good. And what we've done is we brought the world, we brought Satan, we brought religion into the church house, and we're going to use them means, call it Christian. And I surprised a Christian today to say, I asked him about the opinion, what do you think about a Christian magician? And the guy had no idea what I was talking about, thank God. And I told him, yeah, I know two families right now that do Christian magician acts. He said, why would they attach that name to it? And it's out of the Bible, here it is. My date says B.C. 827. They know better than I do. This is long before the church of Jesus Christ. This is long before Jesus was born. And in Judah, where they're doing right, in Judah, where is the temple? Amaziah has picked up the loser gods and held them and that angered God. So when you do evangelism, you do teaching by the ways of the world and fallen gods, it angers God, no matter what name you put to it. Wherefore, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah, and he sent unto him a prophet. Isn't God nice? That mean you rotten God. God says, listen, the guy's doing wrong. I'm going to send him somebody. I'm going to send him an ambassador of me. I'm going to send him the word of God. I think in some cases I've been an ambassador of the Lord for some churches. Maybe, maybe not. They sent the prophet which said unto him, Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people, of the people, for the people, by the people? Republican and Democrat are gods of the church today. On July 4th, Donald Trump got more felicity on Facebook than Jesus Christ. He's going to say, you don't like it? That's tough. You face God and repent and get right. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you sins. Sought the gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of their hands. Now, God sent this man. Correct? 
God sent this man with a message to, to Amaziah, correct? This man goes up and the word of God goes up to Amaziah. Why did you choose losing God? God's the God of victory. God's the one that gave you the victory and you chose to lose your God. And it came to pass, as he talked with him, as the prophet is explaining to him, talking with him, that the king, Amaziah, said unto him, Art thou made of the king's council? Why shouldst thou be smitten? What a long way we come from David and Nathan. Nathan walks up to David, gives him a nice little parable. He said, you know, this little lamb, this little sheep, she was tender and, and kind and slept with her owner. And he nourished her. He loved her. And along came this rich man and took her and, and had him for his own face. David goes, man, that man's going to pay for it, sheep. For it. Yeah, that's what the scriptures say. And Nathan looked at him and said, thou art the man. And David, I don't know, I don't know on his knees. I don't know. Don't say. But I know David in his heart bent down on his heart before Nathan and says, Lord God, I sinned against you. We look at Amaziah. You're doing wrong, Amaziah. God has sent me to you better shut up if I smack you. Who do you think you are? You're not on the payroll of my staff. I want to smite you. Then the prophet forbear and said, I know that God has determined to destroy thee because thou has done this and has not hearkened unto my counsel. Well, look at it. He don't fight the king. He says, okay, fine. You're a loser too. Bye. Have a good day. And Amaziah, the king of Judah, took advice not from the man of God, and sent to Joash, the son of Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel. This is where they're all wicked. This is not one right king. They are serving Baal. They're serving Baal. They're serving Asherah. They got all kinds of religion in Israel. They will be the second people to go. Gad, Reuben, the half tribe of Manasseh that did not come into the promised land, they go into captivity first. Israel will go into captivity by the Assyrians next. Not one king does right. They still got the golden uh, calf. I'm going to say golden arches. Okay. Maybe they dress up like cows too. I don't know. Maybe they have spirit nights. Saying. We've been to, to the world where we brought religion in. And we honor it. We love it. So he comes. Saying come let us see one another in the face. When Face to face. And it's not face to face. I want to behold him. Face to face. I want to talk to you. And Joash, king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, he doesn't even meet him. He sends somebody. The thistle, Amaziah, that was in Lebanon, sent to the cedar, me, Joash, which is in Lebanon. So we're both in Lebanon. Give thy daughter to my son to wife. A feminine. A council by marriage, that's what Solomon did to the, the, his wife of Egypt and Pharaoh. That's what the kings have been doing. There was one king we've already read. He met with Jehoshaphat's daughter and said, we are married. We are a husband and wife. We've come a long way from, Je from uh, Jehoshaphat meeting and having fellowship with ah Ahab. And here we go, a great-great-grandson saying, I'm going to make a marriage relationship with Israel and me. We're... And this is where you get the marriage of unsaved to a saved person. It's wrong. It's heartache. It's trouble. And it's happened in B.C. 827. And in the law, it prescribes a Jewish person was not only not to marry a, 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 another Jew, that was walking wrong, that was following other gods, but you were to marry in the tribe. Israel's not walking with God. There are to be no marriages with them. And the king of Judah has no business, being of Judah, to be marrying into another tribe of Israel. Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast, which be the army that's going to kill him. 
that was in Lebanon and trod down the thistle. <laughs> Amaziah, you, you're going to fall. And I'm going to do your falling for you. That's a parable. But Amaziah would not hear. Boy, he don't listen. You know what the sins of not listening? Losing and death. For it came of God that he might deliver him them into the hand of their enemies, Israel. Israel is their enemy. Amaziah wants to join in love and marriage. Huh? 19? All right, verse 19. And thou sayest, Lo, thou hast smitten the Edenites. Verses 1 to 12. Thy heart is lifted thee up to boast. You're getting prideful. Pride is a sin. Look how well I've done. Look at the great things I've done. Look at me. Abide now at home. Don't even show up. Stay there. He's already in Lebanon. So he's telling them, get out of Lebanon and go home. Why should thou meddle to thy hurt? You're going to get hurt. That's what we say in this French today. You're going to get hurt. That thou should fall. Even thou and Judah with thee. You're not going to take yourself. You're going to take yourself and others with you. Sin hurts others. Again, but, but Amaziah would not hear, for it came of God. This is of God. The love of God. God is love. That he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies. God said, I'm going to deliver you. You're going to lose in my hand. Because you worship God. God is not going to allow everybody into heaven. Because you worship other things besides Jesus Christ. Beside, I mean, excuse me, because they sought after the gods of Edom. So the downfall of Amaziah is picking up those little images and idols, idolatries and the dolls. We talked about this today with some Christian friends at the flea market. You know, and to our amazement that the Catholics removed the third commandment. Thou shalt not make no graven images, thou shalt make no idols. And they take ten and break into two because they have idolatry. And if you can get a, a Catholic to read the Bible and say, Hey, look, what you're doing angers God no matter what your church says. And again, the Christian church that is bought in Jesus Christ, they have idols and, and images and it's in the churches today and it's in the form of the pastor. And it may not be a dead statue. It may be a, a living man. It may be a living woman. It may be you're uh, on television, on the radio, or or it, we're lifted up. And even Paul says, he, he's speaking to the Corinthian church, we are of Paul. We are of Apollos. That's idolatry. That's a sin. That's what's going on here. And it makes God angry. So Joash, the king of Israel, went up, and they saw one another in the face, like he wanted. Verse 17. Joash said, let's not do this. Amaziah would not listen. Both he and Amaziah, king of Judah, at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel for Amaziah's sin. And Amaziah was warned by a prophet and by the enemy. There's nothing worse that I, I could ever think about. And I have Christians come up and, and help me and correct me. But there's nothing worse than having an unsaved person come up and correct you. It breaks the, the circle of pride. It really puts you down. But God will use the unsaved man to come and get you. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to his tent. Retreat! We surrender! And Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Jehoash, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem. 
He's bringing him to his own capital. And break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim. That's interesting because we looked at Ephraim the other night. To the corner gate. 400 cubits. You want to deal with Ephraim? Ephraim joined the idols, let them alone. Ephraim's gone sour. Ephraim's not walking. I'm going to take their gate and I'm going to take to the corner. I'm going to just wipe that out just to show you. We don't want to. Ephraim and Israel don't want to have anything to do with God and, and Jerusalem no more. Now watch this king. And destroyed it. And he took all the gold and the silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of God with Obadim and the treasuries of the king's house and hostages also and returned to Samaria. Golden spoons, the plates, the, 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 uh, the basins, anything found in the treasure places of the house of the Lord and the king's house, he took them. He spoiled them. And he goes back to Samaria. Samaria is the capital of Israel. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Joash leaves Amaziah in Jerusalem, waving, Bye! Thank you for all the gold and silver and everything. Told you not to join with me, you loser. Bye! And Amaziah is standing there. The house of the, the house of the Lord has been raided. His house has been raided, and there have been hostages taken. You loser! Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah? We've already studied that in Israel. Now, after the time of Amaziah, did turn away from following the Lord. What we just read, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem. I can assume that after Joash left, bye, see you later, loser, with the gold and silver and people, the people are left in Jerusalem like, uh, conspiracy against you, against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, so he's on the run now. On his, for his life. But they sent the Lakish after him and slew him there. He didn't get away. And they brought him upon horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. And that's the life of a king who said, I'll bring the world in. And the result of his life bringing the world in, he dies. He die, gets buried in the, the great place he's supposed to be buried. But God's not pleased. People have been injured. People have been taken hostage. People have lost things and their life because of one man's sin. And when you let the world into Christianity, the true Christianity, you're going to have hostages. You're going to have life. You're going to have stuff taken. And you're just going to be sat there with death. The wages of sin is death is written to Christians in Romans chapter 6. We use it for the lost people, but that is written to Christians. It's amazing. Do not tamper with the world and gods and Satan and the devil. Focus on Jesus Christ. 